episode just to give you guys a little follow up onto yesterday's video. My store opened up around 8 and we had already had people lined up to get the Switch. Those neon ones sold out before I even clocked out. And when I left, there was only about 6 Switches available in around 11.30 a.m. We completely sold out of the Switches. I wasn't even able to get one at that time. But there was a few reasons as to why I didn't buy one when I left work and I was a little hesitant to get one all day long. And I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a few reasons as to why. First off, one of the reasons, and I've been very, very straightforward about this, is just the lack of third-party support so far. There's really nothing in the lineup, and I have been looking at videos for hours, looking up and down, scouring every side I could to try to figure out what's up with the third-party support on the Switch. Now, the only thing that I really see that's promising is Skyrim coming to it, but that's about it. And Nintendo had personally invited them to work on the Switch. So there's not really a lot of third-party people coming to the Switch as an official announcement right now, which is really disappointing to me. And what's really disappointing is I don't see a lot of people talking about this. All these websites talking about the great Switch games coming out and this, that, and the other. Nobody's really talking about the third party support, and I really feel like that's disappointing. I've made a few comparisons of the Switch to the Vita in a sense of the Vita release was very vague, and I was extremely excited for the Vita. I put a lot of trust into it, and come to find out, the library for it was extremely tiny, and there wasn't a lot of interesting games that they touted were going to be on it. They were like, we're going to have the next AAA Call of Duty games coming out on the Vita, and we had like a really half baked, crappy Call of Duty come out on the Vita and and just overall the Vita was a very promising set of hardware without a lot of games to really back it and that was really really unfortunate plus and I obviously think that it's no hidden secret or mystery that Nintendo carries their own consoles and platforms very very hard and that is to be expected Nintendo was really great at initiating new innovative ideas and really taking advantage of the hardware that they put out even if it's underutilized they can make fantastic games as shown with the switch but also as shown with the switch I think one of the main reasons of its failure was the lack of that third party support. I could only name maybe a handful of titles that would really interest me if I even had gotten a Wii U and that's about it and they're all mainly Nintendo titles. And as you guys know I was a hardcore PC player and PS4 player and Xbox player. I never really was a big Nintendo person that kind of sat on the sidelines and was really impressed by the innovations and stuff they did but I never personally wanted to invest my money into it because there just wasn't a lot going on with the console. For the Switch to really settle in with me it needs to have a robust library games. It needs to have a lot of things that are catered to more adult center audiences. Something that Nintendo really isn't going to hit home with, I don't think. I think they're really going to focus on their family-friendly audience, which there's nothing wrong with, and they obviously do a great job of it, but I would really like some more uh, violent, gory, mature titles, if you know what I mean. Like, maybe we could see a Grand Theft Auto on the Switch. That would be really cool. A second one is the online features. Now, it's obviously going to be in kind of like a free trial period before they start charging for a subscription, which I really don't agree with on any platform, but that's for another day. One of my next little issues with the Nintendo Switch, even though it is going to be in a free trial period, is their online services, which obviously is going to be in a free trial period and they're not going to start charging until later on, which I don't really agree with charging a service for online shit. Anyways, that's kind of why I got a PC. But they've just been really, really vague about how everything works. Now, one thing that the Vita really did that I enjoyed is it improved on the PSP. It made it was basically like what the PSP wanted to be back in the day. It had party chat support. You could be playing a game and you could put a party chat. <coughs> Fuck. And next, another thing I want to bring up is the vagueness of how they're going about their online features, which is going to be in a free trial period, and I don't even agree with you charging a subscription for anyways. And I think it's no secret that Nintendo Nintendo's kept their online features locked down for some time now, back with the implementation of the friend code thing that they have been using for a long time and is still present in the Switch, where you can't just create an account and add other people by their account name, you have to manually type in some long letter code to actually add your friend. And the party chat features are very limited and they're going through like an app on your cell phone, it's not going to be dedicated to the console itself, that makes no sense to me. Even with the Vita, is the Vita was basically what the PSP wanted to be, you could have a party chat app out side of the game where you could be talking to people that weren't even in your game while you were playing a game online, which was like a really, really nice experience. It was a really nice feature to have, and I don't know why this isn't proprietary in the Switch itself. They keep doing like these weird workarounds to like, I guess, protect kids' safety, like pedophiles are going to be playing Splatoon and Mario Kart, and they're really going to get somewhere with that, but I mean, it just hinders the experience of the game overall, and that's something I see being a big issue with somebody who has more recently been playing a lot of CSGO, and it's 
very, very dependent on that chat features. And I think I remember a game came out. Was it for the Wii U? I think it's called Triforce Heroes. I really don't know anything about it, but I heard a problem with that game being that it was a cooperative game and you couldn't talk to your teammates because they didn't allow you to do that. And I feel like Nintendo is unnecessarily being a pain in the ass with that. And another thing is they don't offer any kind of media player or streaming services, which I personally wouldn't use a ton, but I think should be a standard in consoles and things now. I mean, even the PS4 and the Xbox One didn't come with media players at launch, which I think is absolutely retarded. And the Vita had all of these chat features, all of these functionalities, and they also had streaming services and a web browser. And none of this is present on the Switch, which just doesn't make sense to me. You're paying $300 for a portable console, and you can't even get Netflix and a web browser on it. It just doesn't make sense to me. And the thing is that they actually have a web browser on the Switch, and it's like coded in there for you to connect a Wi-Fi hotspot. And you can kind of do like a workaround where you can actually access your Facebook from it. But it just doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you put the browser and you already have it in, but they just have it locked so nobody can use it? A lot of people are like, well, I'm going to be using it to play games on. I don't really care about the web browser. But it's just the fact that you should have as many features as you can possibly get on this thing. You're paying a premium price and the competition offers so much more in their consoles and their platforms that the Switch just isn't doing. Naturally, the Switch is in its own lane in a certain way, but still, it's supposed to be like a home console and it doesn't even have streaming services. It just doesn't make sense to me. And my final point, which kind of drives this whole thing home and can be the ultimate determining factor on whether I would actually pick this thing up at all or not, is how out of touch Nintendo seems to be with the community, just like I said with the chat features and some of the other functions within the Switch that they just seem to lack for whatever reason that really should be a standard now. It's how either out of touch or careless they are about the community. I mean, they're just now starting to show a really vague interest in the esports scene, which is something that they were originally, like, I think against, but that is, that's a little relevant to this, little more or less relevant. The problem for me is I am a YouTube creator. I have been for years. I love making gaming videos. I love making videos on stuff that I'm doing throughout my day or working on. The reason that I make gaming videos is because I play a lot of CSGO. I play a lot of games. So I like actually creating my own content around it. I just like creating content in general and because it just happens to be gaming, that's what I like creating my content around. I can't really see myself playing games without making videos about it. It's just something that really comes natural to me and it's something I spend a lot of time on. For me, these two things go hand in hand. If I'm not able to actually create content on the games and stuff I'm playing, I almost feel like I'm wasting my time in a sense. I feel like I'm not doing the full potential of my hobby and it really really bothers me when I can't do that especially when Nintendo is sending people to give copyright strikes on people's channels because they're showing off fucking gameplay it's honestly just like a disgusting slap in my face to see them basically attacking the people that support them literally attacking the people that support their content that are big longtime fans that are literally helping drive their business I can't tell you how many times I knew nothing about a Nintendo game but I would see a YouTube video on it and be like oh wow I really want that I think Splatoon looks like a fucking amazing game but if I can't make Splatoon montages I'm not gonna support the damn game I'm not gonna pay for your online service just so you can tell me oh no we're not gonna let you make videos that's not gonna happen well I'm not gonna buy your fucking $300 console <laughs> the switch is a very premium exclusive system I really don't consider this affordable in any means the damn pro controller is 80 bucks and it doesn't even come included with the console the Joy-Cons are 80 bucks. If you need an extra controller, you're shelling out almost $100. That's not counting the games. That's not counting the online purchases you're going to make. That's not counting the online services. That's what I meant to say when I said purchases, but now I'm just repeating it. <gasps> why would why would Nintendo, the most creative developers and publishers I see out here, stifle creativity of others, of fans of theirs? Why would they want to shut down free advertising that is doing nothing but benefiting them? I just, there's a lot of things you could say about Nintendo. It's just like, I want to keep saying I don't understand, but I really don't. I don't understand why I need to use chat through a fucking phone app. I don't understand why I can't make videos of the game that I'm spending over $300 on. I don't understand why you have a web browser that you aren't allowing people to use as a web browser. <laughs> I just don't understand why the most innovative game publisher and company out here is being the least innovative when it comes down to pushing community. I want the Switch so damn bad. Having a portable console that's like a handheld and a home console has really always been a dream to me. That's something I really, really wanted the Vita to be so bad, and it just kind of fell flat. And I don't want the same thing to happen to the Switch if I'm investing a lot of money into one of these. I want to be able to create videos and feel like I'm getting some kind of satisfying return 
from one of these besides just gaming. I want to know that I'm fully getting my money's worth when I buy a Switch. I could buy a laptop with a dedicated gaming graphics card in it for 500 bucks, that's only 200 more, and have an extensive limitless library of games, and have the full functionality of a full PC. There's this thing called the GPD Win that's out right now that I could buy for about 300, and I could have a fully functioning PC that fit in my pocket. Now granted, it's obviously not going to be as powerful as the Switch, but I'm just saying my money can go into so many things that I would be putting into the Switch just to get less features, less functionality. And I don't see why we can't get the best of both worlds. Why can't we get the innovative Nintendo and also get all the features that everybody else is offering? It would be extremely easy. But I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall because people have complained about the same things for years and it just, I feel like a broken record and this is one of the first times I've really talked about Nintendo stuff because I am extremely intrigued by the Switch. The Switch is something I am extremely excited about. I love what they're doing with it. I love that it's like a home console that you can also take anywhere and you can also pop the controller off and play split screen anywhere. It's just, it's crazy to me. It's really, really cool, but I'm just terrified of buying one and I don't know why I feel like that. I don't think I should feel like that as a consumer. <sighs> That is a lot to say. Anyways, guys, I really hope they address some of these things, and I really, really hope to see them improving on the Switch in the next coming months. I would love to see more third-party support. I would love to see how they're getting Skyrim crammed on one of these things, and I would love to honestly own a Switch. I just want to make sure that I'm getting the most from my money, and I don't feel like almost $400 for this console and a game is really getting my money's worth with how limited the features are. Again, I'm not bitching. Well, I am bitching, but I just want the console to be as best as it can be. That's all I want. Being somebody that was an early adopter of the Vita and just being absolutely disappointed in that console really just sets a whole new bar for me, a whole new standard, and I just want the Switch to do very, very well. I feel like they're making plenty of steps in the right direction, but I feel like there's still a ways to go. How do you guys feel about this? Do you have any interest in the Switch, and are you thinking in the same aspects that I am? Because I really hope that I'm not one of the only people thinking about this, because I haven't seen anybody talking about the third-party support. It's a important it's important for the lifespan and that is going to be the video guys i'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here if you want to start a discussion in the comments ask me any questions or talk to me about the switch i would love to do that hit me up there or hit me up on twitter drop a like if you enjoyed the video helping my little 800 subscriber 60 views a video ass out a ton would be you doing that so be sure to like subscribe share if you enjoyed i feel really gay saying that and it's been t i'll see you on the next one and it may be with a switch and I'm out. Bye!